In this question, we're asked to find the domain of the sum of two functions, f of x equals 1 over x minus 3, and g of x equals the square root of negative 4 minus x. We start by analyzing the function f of x. It's reasonably obvious to look at the denominator and say, if I were to plug 3 into the equation, I would get a 0 in the denominator, and then I would end up dividing by 0, which is illegal. So hopefully you understand why, for f of x, x equals 3 must be excluded from the domain. Now how do we indicate this as an interval? First we can draw a graph where we put 3 on a number line, an open circle above it because 3 is excluded from the domain, but we recognize that any number to the left of 3 is not going to give us a 0 in the denominator, so we can plug it in. Similarly, any number to the right of 3 is not going to cause us any issues either, so I can plug those numbers in as well. This gives us a domain of negative infinity to positive 3, union 3 to positive infinity. We're using parentheses around the 3 because that number is excluded from the domain. Now analyzing g of x, we see that we have a square root of a negative 4 minus x, Remember that you cannot take even roots of negative numbers. They could be 0 and they could be positive. The radicands can never, ever, ever be negative. So to find out which values of x make that true, we set our radicand negative 4 minus x to be greater than or equal to 0. We can solve this very quickly by moving the x to the other side. If we add it over, 0 plus x will just give us x and this will yield negative 4 is greater than or equal to x. Again, to avoid a silly mistake, let's put it on a number line. If we pick a number to the left of negative 4, let's say negative 5, and we evaluate this inequality, negative 4 is greater than or equal to negative 5. Yeah, that's a true statement. So all the numbers to the left of negative 4 will give us a positive radicand. So those numbers are in the domain. Now let's say we pick a number to the right of negative 4, say 0. Negative 4 is greater than or equal to 0. That's a false statement. That means any number to the right of negative 4, if we were to plug it into the g of x equation, it'll end up giving us a negative radicand, which we can't do anything with. So the domain of g of x is from negative infinity to negative 4, but because at negative 4, the function is going to ask you to find the square root of 0, we include negative 4. We can find the square root of 0. Now remember, notationally, f plus g of x is just another way of writing f of x plus g of x. It just indicates the sum of the two functions. So we can write the two functions together with a plus in the middle. We get 1 over x minus 3 plus negative 4 minus x inside of a square root. In order to find the domain of this sum, we actually need to find the intersection, which is that what is in common between the domain of f of x, the domain of g of x, and the domain of f plus g of x, this new function that we created by adding the two functions together. Easiest way to visualize this is to draw a number line with negative 4 and 3 on it. Open circle at 3 because we have to disregard or exclude 3 from our original discussion. And we have an arrow going in both directions. Again, this is the same graph that I drew up earlier. Overlaid on top of it, I'm going to draw an, a closed dot at negative 4 with an arrow going to the left. Same graph that I drew right here. Now what we're looking for with intersections, which is this upside down U, is where there's an overlap. And hopefully it's obvious to see that there's an overlap right there from negative infinity to negative four. So that is our domain for this function, negative infinity to negative four. And that's it.